Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and I wanted to go over uh, or correct an error, a couple errors that I made in my previous video regarding the Bidax cooling mods that we can do. You can see right now this Bidax right here, the ASIC chip temperature is around 59 degrees, 59.4, almost 60 degrees Celsius during the peak heat of today's Florida summer or almost summer, while this one has already fallen off. This is actually one of my better performing ones. But the average uh, chip temperature was in 72 degrees, uh, and it's, of course, hit the thermal limit, so now it is off. And there's a reason why that is. Let's go look at the bid axis. So first, my theory about having the fans pushing upwards is that we have some sort of airflow over this heat sink at the top, which is supposed to help cool the voltage regulator. I got one on the front and one on the back. But that theory could be wrong. But that's not the only thing I did wrong. This one that's performing better actually has the fans horizontally, right? While this one has it vertically. The other thing that I did wrong is that these 3D printed brackets that you can get from Decentral or 3D print on your own may not be 100% perfect. So when you're applying pressure or mounting it, if you over torque these little screws and nuts that are on the back, it could cause the PCB, which is not that thick compared to your standard motherboards, to kind of warp, bow, what have you, you're not making sufficient contact with the actual ASIC die. And if you look very carefully, there's some pink uh, thermal putty in there, uh, or thermal paste, that's Cryonaut Extreme, one of the best thermal paste, but it kind of looks like this bracket is bowed, like this side is a little bit lower than this side. And I did notice some inconsistencies before, because if you look at the cooler, this side of the cooler is higher than this side right there so it's not making sufficient contact and I could be because when I went to go screw this uh, particular heat sink to this plate or this uh, contact holder um, the screws weren't lined up the screw holes would not line up so I did the best I can I'm gonna try to address that in this video but also rotate the fan to horizontal to uh, hopefully get us better performance because this is hitting 60 degrees during the peak heat of the day and it's doing 1.48 terahash while this one is only doing 1.1, 1.2 and it's hitting 72, 74 degrees. So let's go ahead and take this off. I already got my fix-it kit here. Uh, you can unscrew it but you want two hands because you want to hold the nut in the back of this uh, particular guy right here. Otherwise, it's hard to take off. Sometimes they will come off, sometimes they won't. But all I'm going to do is simply remove all of these screws. I did leave myself enough space so I could get to this one. And very carefully, uh, you know, clean up everything and swap the heat sink over to the position that I want to hold it. The other thing is, is that I'm using a different type of fan. You can see this Pleb Source PCB has the J7 connector and the 4-pin PWM. I might swap it to the Noctua fan. The Nerdax is currently using it, but the Nerdax doesn't need that much. Um, and I already have, like, I could grab this fan and use it for the Bidax, which is going to provide us better hash and better efficiency. However, just to see the thermal improvement we get just from that simple adjustment that I'm making that I got wrong in my previous video, let's go ahead and do that, what I was talking about, try to get it more flush or level mounted on the bracket, as well as swapping the horizontal positioning to see if it does improve it. Another thing that I want to call out is this is a copper pipe going through the center of an aluminum uh, cold plate or flat surface. Well, this one's been blacked out. Even the cold plate is blacked out. Is that pigment or that color affecting the heat dissipation? I am not sure. Maybe sanding down the, the uh, cold plate and making it as flat as possible and exposing that copper will make it more thermally efficient. However, let's just focus on swapping and see if we get a thermal improvement. So we rotated the heat sink and fan. Um, a little bit more thermal paste is on there. Not a lot, right? Because I think that's another thing I did wrong. So to recap here, uh, three things I did wrong. One, I thought the fan being at the bottom of the heat sink blowing up would be a good idea. Apparently not. Two, that 3D printed bracket using to hold the heat sink wasn't sufficiently mounted and it was uneven. And then three, putting too much mounting pressure on these screws. You don't need a lot. You just want this heat sink to rest on there and provide sufficient airflow for the two heat pipes that are going through. So now I'm just gonna carefully torque that down. Again, you don't need a lot. Like I just literally screwed these on by hand with my two fingers and then I'm just gonna give it a light torquing, not too much, power it on, and let's go look at thermals. 
And by the way, I'm recording this video before my cooling mod video even comes out. So many of you that commented in that last video might be saying the same things that I already found just from my experience and learning the hard way, which I love learning every day. So if you have some tips, leave it in the comments. Just please be professional or courteous about it. While we're still sitting around the 1.1, almost 1.2 terahash range, we did drop down the thermals down to 67.5. Um, but still, this this black uh, 52 poly cooler just not performing as well as this other guy, which has a CPU hovering around 6 degrees Celsius. Now that VRM, or excuse me, that voltage regulator temperature is pretty high. Definitely want to get some other airflow. A lot of people put fans in the backside, so we'll do that. But I just don't understand why this cooler is underperforming so much while we did improve thermals just by changing the position and not over torquing the uh you know the screws or the mounting mechanism uh, we're just not getting anywhere near what that only copper and aluminum fin stack can do so maybe uh sanding down the coal plate or the bottom section and showing the bare copper and having that directly on the cpu or the uh, asic chip will help out but yeah 67.4 instead of 73, 74, or hitting the over temperature limits. That is definitely a lot better than what we have before. So I'm going to end it, the video here now, um, but I definitely need to see if I can get some 230 grit, 300 grit, and then maybe some uh, 500 plus grit sandpaper to try to cut that black uh, coating off of the heat pipe slash cold plate to see if that can improve thermals on this guy. But I wouldn't recommend it. Just grab the normal 52 pi. Actually, a lot of people are grabbing the low profile ones. Um, those are better in my opinion, because you got you know, air. Let me show you real quick. So the low profile one, the bracketry will have it facing downwards, right? So the fan is at the top blowing down, kind of like the original cooler, but bigger and, and with better copper heat pipes and everything. And so now you're providing air, sufficient air to cool the chips and the board and all that stuff. So that cooler to me is the better choice out of these two, but this is a good option, you know, if you're not too concerned about it or in a cooler climate. I'm just in a hot climate. It's always hot in my house. It's hot outside, ambient air. So yeah, I would just get the low profile one is the one I recommend it. But don't be like me. Don't over torque. You know, sometimes these brackets again are not 3D printed with the best tolerance. They might need to be a little bit of playing around or, or, or finagling or sanding down. And they do sand it and all that good stuff before you get it. But it could be a little bit off like it was on this one. And then over torquing it could bend the PCB. Now you're not making sufficient contact. And putting too much thermal paste can also prevent you from making sufficient contact on keeping the chip cool. So this guy right now is super hot. Touching this copper uh, uh, you know, heat sink will burn your finger if you leave it on there, both of these. So we need to get some airflow on the back and some airflow just blowing across the, the front of the board to bring these guys down a little bit. But definitely need to play around with this guy and see what we can do. Or maybe, stay tuned, do me a favor on the way out, hit that like button, get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. So I'll check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you next one. Take care.